I'm, I, I'm not in any way implying animus at all, but I was told that people from someone in the building, they were just cool the way you and Antonio seemed to fit like a hand in glove. There was really didn't seem like an acclamation. You guys just instantly started working together. For you, was that something special, the way you two have been able to mesh? Uh, yeah, it's a big part of the job. I mean, especially during the football season, even now you spend more time with the head coach than you do with your wife. So you have to get along really well. Um, it's just fun to go through the process, even though it's a new process with a new group of people. But yeah, you want it to be kind of seamless. And But you know, we're not there yet. But it's been a good process. Like I said, I think I said at the podium, just watching how he worked through the assistant coaches process, because I've been through that where we've made mistakes, where we've hired somebody too fast. And and um, watching him go through that process was just really was an eye opener. I'm like, gee, he's, he's a pro. He knows how to do this. So, um, and as we work through this, um, yeah, but it, a lot of, you know, football is football, but, you know, it's a people business and relationship building amongst all levels, um, players and coaches, front office and coaches and everybody alike. So um, it's a big part of it. Tom, you had mentioned that uh, a lot of work to do offensively. Are we talking more scheme? Is it talent? Is it personnel? What, what would you? Well, it'll be a new scheme just based on a new coordinator. Um, and then, you know, if you look at the offense, like right now, like just for agency wise, like our offensive line is, you know, has a lot of holes. So we got to kind of figure that all out. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's going to be a collaborative effort amongst the coaching staff and personnel staff to kind of get this thing moving. You've been in the AFC West for a long time. Now that you've gone through the roster, how close do you feel like the Raiders are to competing with those guys who just won a back-to-back -back championship? Yeah, impossible to answer how close you are, um, but we're going to keep working towards it. So um, I was asked earlier on another interview, like, you know, when you build your team, are you building your team's foundation? Or are you building a team to beat the Chiefs? Right. I'm like, well, the answer is, like, we're building our team's foundation, but you can't help but see, you know, the Super Bowl champs are right in our division and Patrick Mahomes is there. Um, so as you go through the process, yeah, we're, all, we're looking at Denver, we're looking at Kansas City, um, we're looking at the Chargers, obviously, you know, which I should say I know them pretty well, but they're going to be completely different next year. So as you build your football team, you need to build us first, but you can't help but have your eye on the division team. You can't help but have your eye on the Chiefs of how you match up with them. Um, but our plan is to kind of, we know we have to build, okay, but I don't see this as trying to tear everything down and start from scratch. We, we want to be able to compete and win along the way, so that's the goal. Biggest challenge evaluating quarterbacks before the draft, like as far as looking at these young guys and to figure out what, what they're about and what, what you can project for them going forward. It's like all the positions, you're projecting them to the next level. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of players that are really great college players that just don't pan out at this level. So, trying to project forward on these players, um, we have it so much easier than other sports. Like, uh, you know, imagine a baseball scout trying to project a high school senior to a major league baseball player. Like, that's that's hard. Like, we have it easy. Like, we've watched, like, you know, these quarterbacks are all big school quarterbacks. So we've seen them play against other big schools. But still, there's a jump there. And, you know, can you do that the same thing at this level? So, um, you know, you put enough scouts, opinions, coaches' opinions, and then, you know, head coach's opinion, and my opinion, and you kind of get that all together, and you try and make the right decision. You just try and increase your odds on the player you take, whether no matter what position it is, that you're going to hit on the guy. But we all know that, you know, we're not right all the time. So, Tom, you go through your history, and Jim Kelly, Peyton Manning, Philip Rivers, Justin Herbert, you know what a big time quarterback looks like. Does that make you more aware that you need that kind of a quarterback, or um, do you feel like there's other ways to win games? Well, um, yeah, everybody's looking for that Patrick Mahomes, obviously. But those guys you just mentioned, where it helps me is I know what they put into the job inside the building that people don't see, that you don't see on tape, and what it takes to be a quarterback in this league. Um, you know, Justin Herbert and Phillip Rivers and Peyton Manning and, you know, how they prepared to play this level, what you have to do. I think that helps me being around those guys who know what it takes. Because um, it's more than just watching tape of a player, um, especially at the quarterback position, because so much of the game is from here up. And you know how do you evaluate? You know how do you evaluate this? And this is hard. So, um, so seeing those guys on a day-to-day -day basis at least helps me. You know, for whoever down the road, whoever we take, you know, you got to have those same qualities. You've never had to trade up for any of those guys. When you think about that, um, does that make you? Are you less reluctant to do that? People say, well, he's never done it before, but you never really had to either. Yeah, you just trading up into any point in a round, you have to weigh it. You know how, how bad do you want the player, and how much are you giving up, and what are you losing with that? So it's just a judgment decision, and you know part of that is 
We may think we know the player he's going to hit, but we really don't, right? We just don't. You never 100% know. Um, but you have to weigh what you're giving up, you know, and could that set you back or can you handle it? So it's, that's where all judgment decisions. Is there a price that's too high if you feel like you identify your guy? Is there somewhere you're like, I can't go past this? Oh, I'm sure there probably is. <laughs> Uh, no, we're exploring. We'll explore every avenue, and I like the quarterback that we have. I mean, I thought he did a really good job last year. Um, you know, rookie quarterback to come in to play the way he played in the circumstances he played in. I, I think that you should not discount that. Something I know we talk about trading up, but I, I believe so. The team that the Chargers never traded down. Is there something philosophical that you against trading down, or did it just not? No, I just. I mean, I would love to trade down. It just didn't, you know, in those circumstances, it just didn't present itself in something we thought made sense for us. Um, but certainly it's not a philosophical uh, reason to not doing that. Now that you've started to dive in and look at the Raiders, is there something that's pleasantly surprised you that maybe you weren't expecting? Um, there's a lot of things that, because I just didn't know much about, you know, the team, the organization until I got here. Um, there's a lot of people in the building that are really impressive with what they do in all different departments, and that's things you don't know until you get there. That's been that's been great to see. Actually, the building itself has been amazing. Um, but I guess you know when I just looking at the football team, when you can establish a level of toughness and kind of have that, and I think that can carry over from year to year. Um, that's hard to do, and I think we have that right now. So we're starting with the base of that, which is um, encouraging. So that's the one thing, and I, cause I, I know I'd mentioned that already, but um, the mental and physical toughness of the football team just continued to show up um, throughout the year last year. So that's a good base to start with. Scout and evaluate the, you know, your guys that you have in the building from a personnel perspective. You know, what are the things that you preach to you know these scouts and these people in place as to what you're looking for for the roster? Well, it kind of varies by position, and, and a lot of that varies based on what we're going to be in offense and defense. Um, but. Uh, you know, for every player, like like a drive and desire to be great, those are two traits that you just have to have at this in this league. Because every team is good, every team has talent. But when we bring players in here, like you got to have a drive to be great, a drive to be better, and get working. And what I've noticed, at least so far, is how many players right now are coming to our building to work out on their own in the off season. Um, it's not like that everywhere. Um, and that, that shows me right there, like the guys, they want to be around, they want to be around each other, and they want to do things to make them a better football player. So that, that's, that's a base part of it. Um, <laughs> like I'm seeing that already, it's pretty early in the process, but I kind of noticed that already. Um, uh, Antonio talked about from day one, embracing the Raider culture, and the, the bravado, every, all of that. He's been known to go on some podcasts and say some things. Um, are you cool with that? Are you fine with him? Just that's who he is and, and being fine with things he's I, I am. Plus, I'm so boring. It'll kind of even its way out because I don't I never do say anything that's remotely interesting and he's the other way. So I think it'll kind of be good for the Raiders. Um, but I think it's great. You know, you want to have an identity of who you are. And I want to lean into the Raiders identity. And that's part of the Raiders identity. So I, it doesn't bother me. I actually, I kind of like it. Tom, you've got okay. offensive line. Um, what was your evaluation of that unit last year, and what do you look at as far as the guys in the market like Andre and Jermaine? You know, as a as a group of five, they did a pretty good job in pass protection. Um, and run game wasn't bad as well. You know, third down, you know, it's really it's, it's everybody involved. Third down wasn't great. Um, red zone play wasn't really good. But you know, as far as you know, they held up pretty well last year. Um, a group that was kind of put together. You know, a little bit draft, a little bit of free agency, a little bit of late signings. Um, so we'd like to get some consistency in there with that group. Usually O-line consistency takes a number of years to get there. And you're talking about, you know, five starters, plus you need at least, you know, two more after that that really can come in and play. So it just takes time to kind of build that and get that together. And, you know, I'd like to have a group that's kind of placed together, you know, consistently. Even, you know, in the free agency era, it's hard, but you can still kind of get there. So... It may take some time to get it exactly where you want it, um, but you know we've got some areas there that is, you know, the free agency. We got some holes there. So. What is your philosophy when it comes to free agency about you know building the team and maybe not going too deep into free agency, kind of building it with the draft as well? Yeah, I mean the philosophy is we want to resign our own players rather than go sign somebody else's UFAs. That's the, the philosophy. However, you, know, you do have to supplement your roster with UFAs, and then this year with where we are, 
we're going to have to sign some agreements. That's basically it's a, it's a whole new regime as far as coaches and GM, and there's some things we need to do to get up and running. So we may have to use free agency a little more this year than typically I would like, but it's going to be part of the process. Um, you just have to be very careful in free agency. I mean, I know the cap went up this year, which is great, but it doesn't matter if it's 255 or 555. Like, it's the same group of players that are available. And unfortunately, the success rate isn't that high. You know, in football, when you change teams, as a free agent. So, and, you know, very few of those guys even finish their contract when they sign a big UFA contract. So got to be very... Um, cautious with it, spend the money wisely. Um, but yeah, we're going to have to, you know, probably go that route a little bit more this year than usual. But you have to use all avenues in this league between free agency, draft, street players, trades. Like you just can't really have, hey, we're, we're draft only. It just doesn't work. Um, you, looking that you just admitted you're going to need to sign some free agents. You've got to be extremely happy when you look at your salary cap situation. Yeah, like I said, you just got to spend it wisely. But, you know, a lot of that money, you know, it's not like we're going to take all that money and spend it all on free agents this year. I mean, there's a lot of things that go into it, extensions for our own players, even having money forward for when we have other bigger contracts we have to do. Um, but, yeah, to be in a situation that we do have some to spend, um, yeah, it's better than the alternative, right? We've got some work to do. All right, thanks, guys.